Good evening. We're going to go ahead and open up the Citizens Forum. Um, each speaker that has signed up has three minutes to speak. Please come up to the podium when your name is called and state your name and your address for the record. First up, we have Ray Colazzo. My name is Ray Colazzo. I live at 612 Pleasant Hill Drive, and I'm here to tell you something face to face. I don't hide behind Facebook. Don't you ever again make fun of my race or my history or where I come from. I have a title that you will never, never have. It's called being a veteran. I serve this country. I'm entitled to be here. To ever again make fun of tacos and enchilada appointed to me. For your information, I'm from Puerto Rico. We don't eat that that much over there, okay? You don't have a wall. You have public space comments that you make, you hide behind a hate website that you administer, portrayed in the city's picture. And a lot of people are here who know about it. It's a disgrace. And I'm gonna let you know something that I posted something about the comments that you made the day before the election, or you're gonna deny that you was not there either. Matt, were you there? Yes, yes or sir. no? Were you there? Yes or no? I you're don't not know what the comment is. Uh, about getting rid of Bruce Richardson? Yes. You was there. Were you there? I guess you're not going to answer that one, right? And getting rid of the city, administ city administrator and the human resource manager. Let me tell you something. You had me surprised, okay? You're not a rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes let you know when they're coming. You, you are worse than a rattlesnake. You're a black mamba. You can make fun of people's race, colors, and religion. I'm not going to put up with it. You could send the chief of police after me. They've been there before. I seem bigger and better than you, and I'm still here in this city. That's Mr. Richardson. I fought it for five years. I'm ready for another one. But I will not be intimidated, degraded, or made fun of by nobody. And I think you know, you could just grant your little smile. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Before you post something about people's stuff and religion online, look at yourself. You was the one who betrayed a person that you stood and you made a, a yes, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to be there for you. Okay? Kim lie to people. Quit lying. Start telling the truth. Don't hide behind the hate website that you administer. Yes, you administer. And there's other people here who are part of that website. I bet you won't like it if I call you a cracker in public. Right? It's not right, man. I thought you was a decent Christian man to, who really did things for God. Being hate, hiding behind a hate website, it's not Christian. It's not polite at all. I just want to let you know, I'll tell it to you face to face. I don't hide behind anything. Anytime you want to talk to me, pick up the phone and call me. 615-785-6171. I'll give you the shirt off my back, okay? But don't belittle me. Don't insult me. Thank you, Ray. Next up, we have Debbie Hewan. Good evening. I'm Debbie Hewan. I live in on Randall Lane since 2000, and I wasn't going to ever have anything else to do with this city after the city, certain people, a small, small group of people, maybe 84 of them in this city that are department heads and a couple of city leaders, uh, made me feel so hated and unwelcome in my own city that I didn't want to be on any more boards and give my time, volunteer my efforts or my experience or my knowledge. I gave up a pet site that I had for finding lost and found pets for six or seven years because of hateful remarks coming from a hate group that targeted it that so much that me and the other administrators couldn't keep up with taking their nasty comments off of the page. 
So after saving hundreds and hundreds of pets over the years, even saved Melissa Brown's pet when it was lost, uh, and several other pets that people own, you know, and raising money for people who needed vet care or food for their pets, shut it down. 1,400 and something people were on that page. Shut it down because we couldn't keep up with the hate. Uh, had to turn off reviews on my personal business page because people I've never done business with were making comments that were not true. There's also a little hate group of about 84, 83 people where people are on there, whether they're commenting or not, they're on there and it's specifically targeting somebody and that's me. And you know, you don't have to like me. I don't want everybody to like me. If they like me, then I'm doing something wrong. I'm not standing up for what I believe in and what's right. But I expect more of city leaders, Jason Cole, Melissa Brown, I expect more of you than to participate in a site. I expect more than our city fire chief to be part of a member on that group. And I'm just shocked. I mean, we've even got a couple of people that are up for uh, grants from the city that run like the Laverne Rescue Squad and Box 100 that are on that site. You know, you can hate me all you want. That's fine. But don't target something you know nothing about. When I get on Jason's page and I saw hate threads on there against me that he let run and he participated in, even when I warned him he needed to stop it, and yet he just takes the screenshots from the text message and posts it on there to fuel the fire. You know, somebody throws some kind of garbage food over my fence to poison my dogs. I mean, you name it, it's been going on and I've been handling it. But then I go on there and I see a black lady or an African American lady, whichever she would prefer to be called, and seeing Jason allow a site that looks like a city webpage have people target her race and her being a strong woman. And then I see a Hispanic man get targeted too for being Hispanic. You know, you expect more. I'm sorry you can't live up to it. Not all of you are involved, but some of you are. Shame on you. And with that, our close the Citizens Forum. We will get started with the Board of Mayor and Aldermen meeting at 7 o'clock. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen meeting for April 2nd, 2019. It's 7 o'clock. Call this meeting to order. We do have a quorum. Uh, the prayer will be with Ms. Zini Terrell and the Pledge of Allegiance will be with Cub Scout Pack 340. Everyone please stand for the prayer and the pledge. Dear Lord, we are meeting tonight to conduct matters of business. Guide our hearts and our minds and spirit in our fairness, right thoughts and speech. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that our affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being our source of guidance tonight. And we seek your help with our affairs tonight. Bless this meeting with your divine intelligence and help us make it the best of our own. We are of d diverse opinions here Yet we wish to mend our differences and reach agreements satisfactory to all. Please share a little of your wisdom with us to help us do right by all concern. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, everyone should have the uh, the minutes from the March 
5th, 2019 regular meeting. Need a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Need a second. I second. I second. I, I'd like to discuss the minutes. Alderman Church? I'm getting over here to it. I have some concerns on the minutes, uh, especially at the uh, parts where we are discussing the the ouster. There's none of the comments are put in the minutes from the board's discussion, and I think well, that's, th that's normal. Pretty pertinent information. Something so serious, so I, I question why that's not in there. If you'll make a note in in these minutes that I'm questioning why. Our open discussion is not in there, please. That's all. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. And motion passes. Moving on to presentations. Lieutenant Campbell? Observe uh, the National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in uh, April, starting on the 14th and going through the 20th. Our uh, emergency communication staff here are truly the uh, the unsung heroes. They're the voices behind the phone and the radio. Uh, these folks work long hours. They uh, work tirelessly to help keep us safe. They give us the information we need as police officers and firefighters to do our jobs. They talk to you all as the citizens to get the information as best as they can to help you. And we want to recognize them for all that they do for us. So with that, we have a proclamation here uh, declaring <clears throat> this week the uh, Public Safety Telecommunications Week, uh, Telecommunicators Week. And uh, we just want to thank y'all for everything that y'all do to help keep us safe. Y'all are really the, the unsung heroes when it comes to emergency services uh, because they people don't see y'all out on the front lines but they they need help they hear you and they, they get that help however they need so congratulations and this is the proclamation declaring this week can we give them a round of applause If I may, our staff, this is only a few of them, Supervisor Andrew White, uh, not with us, our uh, training officers James Harrell and Jimmy Cardwell, training officer Jimmy Phillips, uh, Brittany Berenger, Roy Crite, Ashley Davis, who is here with us, Christine Kam Kamka, and Dalvis Morgan. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. So next we should have a group of realtors from Cross Middle Tennessee. If they could come up for us. <coughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome. So, so <laughs> this year marks the 51st anniversary of the passage of the Fair Housing Act. And so Today, we're going to make a proclamation here declaring April uh, in Laverne, of course, uh, recognizing the Fair Housing Act that prohibits discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, handicap, uh, familiar uh, status, and national origin. So with that, we want to declare April 2019 Fair Housing Month in the city of Laverne. We'll give you all this. Will you take a picture for us? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to use the camera, I promise I do. <laughs> One for the 
see. <laughs> now, I think thank fair you. housing is something we all want to see all across the nation. So thank you all for coming out. And we have one more. Could our members of the American Legion please come up? So today we want to uh, present the American Legion for Smyrna and Laverne with a certificate of recognition. Uh, this year marks the 100 year anniversary of the American Legion and it's, uh, and it's chartering of patriotic mutual help and community service in communities. So we want to recognize that and thank you all for everything that, that you all have done both for our country and our community. So. Thank you. Moving on to department reports. Chief Clark, Fire Department. Board of Aldermen, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> In the March of 2019, we had 288 calls of service. Uh, look back on March of 2018, it was 291. So we're right there at it within three calls. Um, 3.3 minute response time with 23,500 gallons used, mostly on four structure fires that were reported in the month of March. I'd also like to add that we've received uh, successful completion of AMT school. Uh, we've had three to graduate. Congratulations to those guys. Uh, we've also had other training and services. And, um, but uh, the, one of the most important things we need to remember is on April, the 13th, starting at 10 a.m. at the Veterans Memorial Park, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt, and we're going to have a fire department fun day. So we invite everybody to come out and enjoy the fun and, and do some Easter egg hunting. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to Police Department, Lieutenant Campbell. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the board. Uh, in uh, the first slide here, you can see the March of 2018 versus 19, we've had an increase in total calls for service of uh, just a little over 30%. The uh, current year to date, uh, which would be the, uh, the first quarter of 19 versus 18, a 33% increase in calls for service. And the fiscal year 1819 versus 1718, a 45.5% increase in calls for service. That does include uh, self initiated activity by our officers as well as calls for service by our uh, citizens and visitors. Um, on the second slide, if you would notice the uh, total calls for service by time of day, uh, an increase across the board. Uh, every hour of every day uh, of the week as an increase. And on the third slide, you can see the uh, calls for service by day of week and the hour of day. <clears throat> wow. The uh, far right column, you can see a percentage of change, uh, total calls for service 2018 versus 2019, and a pretty significant increase in uh, some of the overnight hours as well as uh, uh, a few hours during the day. Uh, I would like to uh, let you all know we have uh, one officer that graduated from the Train Academy this past Thursday. Uh, we have two that started the Academy this past Sunday. Um, we have uh, two that are in waiting for the Train Academy that will start in July. And 
we will be testing later this month for the uh, last of our openings. Uh, any questions that I can answer for you? So that's a total of what, five new officers? Uh, yes, sir, that is correct. That's great. They'll be on the streets probably this summer then. Uh, I would probably push it more like uh, this fall. This, yeah. uh, training academy is three months. Field training gotcha. is at least three months. Yeah, so. that's, right. that's right. Thanksgiving, that's maybe. That's good for Laverne. <laughs> that's really good. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Campbell. Thank you. And then you should have the codes packet in yours. Randolph is still out, and hopefully we'll be back in the next month. Moving on to Parks and Rec, A.C. Davis. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. There are numbers for the month. We're still having trouble with that traffic counter, but hopefully by the next month we'll have it plugged in and it'll be working fine. Um, we've got a, a few things to cover here. First off, I'd like to bring the attention to Mrs. Dini back here. She is one of our seniors, the one she did the prayer, and offer um, my condolences to her for her loss. And, and, uh, and thank you, Mrs. Dini, again for the prayer. That was, that was awesome. Um, also, we have uh, a lot of things coming up. Uh, Chief Clark touched on the Easter egg hunt. That's probably going to be the biggest day we've had up there in a long time as far as Easter egg hunt. There plenty of reasons for, for all the kids to hang around after it's over with so they can get some hot dogs and hit the bounce houses and, and see the burn trailer and all the other things the fire department's going to have. Um, and that will be on the 13th. Um, we'll start that at 10. The, uh, the countdown will start at 10, so um, I think all of you have been assigned duties that day, so try to be there on time so you can do your countdown for your respective, your respective fields. Um, also, the Senior Center yard sale on April 27th. The numbers are, are climbing now for booths. I think we were up over 20 the last time I checked. Isn't that right, Melissa? Is that right, 20? 23. 23. Okay, so we're, we're getting there. Um, so that will start, we'll start that at eight o'clock, um, but we won't come on out, bring your stuff and, and get you a spot where there's still one available. And I'll bring up the senior prom again. It's not till May 31st, but that's gonna be a big one. So y'all all wanna free up some time to come out for that one. Um, also, uh, upcoming meetings, we have a parks meeting, uh, parks advisory on April 15th at six. April 15th, we have a greenway advisory at 7 p.m. And then on the 18th, we have the senior advisory committee meeting. Now, I'll go back to the seniors where it says senior center upgrades. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on at the senior center right now with people donating things like for the uh, silent auctions. Um, we did get the Connex box cleaned out and moved around from the back of the building to under the shed part of the building where it's easily accessible by staff. And, and we've taken all the stuff out of that and, and we've put WD-40 on the hinges of the door so that's easy to get into now. So that's, that's around there under the, out of the rain and the weather so it's easy to get to. Um, also, and we want to thank Earl Garvin for that and thank you Alderman Noe for setting that up and, and contacting them and having him come help us do that. Um, also, we have a picture that I took down today and donated for the silent auction and our own Carol Brown from the library um, has painted this and it's a gorgeous picture of tulips. Um, so we're, we're going to put that up for auction and it's, it's really gorgeous and we, I talked to her the day and Donna was kind enough to uh, tell her that she could bring her services to the senior center and teach an adult painting class. So that'll, that'll be big time, that, that'll be good for the seniors, I like that. Um, and I want to also thank Garland and Doug and his guys and all of my guys for all the work they've done around back trying to get the, uh, all the, the back cleaned up and leveled out and, and uh, make it so that it's no trip hazard out there. The seniors can go around and enjoy the, the swings underneath the overhang there. And also, last but not least, Mr. Glenn Wagner, I contacted him today. He works at uh, Home Depot in, uh, in Lebanon, I believe, and uh, gave him a list of all the... Uh, the plants and, and seeds that we're gonna need for the uh, garden that uh, Miss Isabella Williams has been so kind to uh, donate for us this year. And uh, Glenn took down my rather long list of uh, wants and needs and he said that he would get back with me and if whatever he had, he would get it for us. So we're looking for, I'm looking forward to that phone call. So next month I'll have more information on that. So any questions? I have more of a comment. Yeah. It's, uh, it looks like the senior yard sale it kind of mimics how old timers day used to be <laughs> yeah maybe right here at city hall park yeah 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 so we had the, the you walked around and everyone had booths here before it was relocated so right. yeah. a lot of the seniors in the community will probably remember that mm -hmm. and the young people in the community will see that's how old timers day used to be everyone had a booth they had crafts they yeah. you know 
It's yeah. pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be big. You know, I asked you earlier about something. I guess I need to ask Bruce, and I'll just do it now so I don't forget. But the day of the yard sale, hopefully we're going to have that uh, Connex box full of stuff from donations from citizens uh, in Laverne. So, so it won't be so cumbersome. I thought maybe I would take my four-wheeler and my big trailer down there because it's low and see if I can just make a circle and load the stuff on the trailer and then take it out to the seniors where they're going to be at and all that without pulling it with a pickup or a trailer. I didn't know if you or Evan thought that was okay or if you need to think about it. Yeah, we'll have to check into that. Okay. For liability issues or I, anything. Trust me, I understand <laughs> the liability now. Mm -hmm. I'll let uh, you know as soon as I know. Okay. Thank you, AC. Thank you. Yep. Moving on, finance department, Phyllis Rogers. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman. Tonight's financial report is year to date through the end of February for the general fund uh, revenues that exceed expenditure for approximately four million dollars. Local sales tax, we've collected approximately five point eight million dollars. That's a million and a half better than what we budgeted and $547,000 better than prior year. For the State Street aid, uh, revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately $40,000. For the stormwater, revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately $94,000. And in our water sewer fund, revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately $2.2 Second page is our balances in our various bank accounts. Third page is comparison to prior year. For the general fund, revenues are up about $131,000. Expenses are up about 144. Uh, for the water sewer fund, the revenues are down a little bit, about 18,000, and expenses are up about 74, and uh, tap fees are also up about 300,000. Any questions? Moving on, library. Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, good evening. For the month of March, the attendance in the library was 6,340. We had an average per day of 244. We issued 106 new cards. We circulated 5,058 5, items, and there were 2,271 computer users. With the children's teen and adult, we had 31 programs total with an attendance of 472. We're very proud of our outreach numbers, uh, 415. This is where Debbie goes out to the daycares during the month. And also Debbie and I got to go back to old school. We did a puppet show at Rock Springs Elementary to 340 students. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, if you will notice, a universe of stories is going to be our theme this year for summer reading. That summer reading program is going to be from June 1st through July 20th. And there's programs from all ages. And when we say all ages, we start at birth. Our birth to 24-month-year-olds, because it's Universal Stories, they're going to be called the Little Dippers. And we thought that was pretty cute. We're going to blast off our summer reading at four, with an universe and Universe of Heroes. There we go, we'll get it out in a second. On Saturday, June 1st, we're going to really push, push it out there. We are going to have games, inflatables, face painting, superheroes of all kinds, and prizes, costume contest, and we have some adults that's gonna come out dressed up like some superheroes, or like that they are our superheroes. And we're also, of course, going to sign up for summer reading. It's going to be a really, really fun day. This is the first day, first time that we've made it this big. I have two staff members, Ashley and Becky, that's working on this. They're doing a magnificent job. So we would love for all of you to come out. It will be Saturday, June 1st, from 12 noon until 3 p.m. Okay, four more days for the volunteer income tax assistance. This coming Friday and Saturday, and next Friday and Saturday, the 5th, 6th, 12th, and 13th, will be our last opportunities for you to have your taxes done for free at the library. They are there from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. 
And United Wave has done an excellent job with their volunteers. Uh, we have had no complaints whatsoever from the people of Hattie, Texas done, and they've gone out of their way for our community, and we appreciate that. Are there any questions? Uh, Donna, one thing that we talked about yesterday, yeah. you may be able to share, I know there's been some discussion about this, where um, you and I have both spoken with Lynn Smith about a potential book club. Yes, yes. Uh, there was, Lynn Smith had wanted to get a book club going, and there was just a little bit of, of uh, not controversy, but she couldn't get a hold of me uh, because my husband had had an accident, and I was out with him. And then I had no voice, and I had a backlog of uh, 11 messages that I needed to check. I had checked those on Friday, and on Saturday I was able to talk to her. But Lynn is very interested in starting a book club at the library. It's something that we have tried in the past, and you've got to have that community involvement. You've got to have someone who's really going to get out there and help get the people in. And I think as a volunteer doing it versus a staff member, I think it's a great idea. So Lynn and I are meeting Thursday to discuss the book club. And uh, we, uh, we have Gary Frazier, who is on our library board. He is a writer and also a very avid reader. He wants to become involved. So we will get the word out once Lynn and I discuss all of the details. And again, I do apologize for the delay in getting back with her. It was not on purpose at all. Um, but I was glad that we did connect and we were able to get everything going. Great job, Donna. Ms. Donna, Thank I have you. a comment. Yes. I want to share a story with you. Okay. Um, since December, I've been mon uh, mentoring some uh, children that are incarcerated in oh, wow. Rutherford County. Um, as they are released, I, I kind of walk their path with them. And uh, one of their things that they must do to complete this program is they have to talk about the positives in their past. And uh, one of the uh, young men in our city, um, without labeling this young man, he, he's on a one through 10, he's a 10, you know, he, he's up there. And um, one of the things that he wrote down that he remembers positive in his life is uh, his mom bringing him to your library. Fantastic. And this kid is, um, he, he's done a lot, but he's on the right path. So we hope we'll have him back in the library soon. That sounds and uh, that's going to be a, a really cool day when, when we walk in there together and, and uh, start, start the next session of his life. And thank you so for your mentoring. I want to share that with you. That is fantastic. That's wonderful. You know, we, we don't save lives per se, but we do save lives. You change lives. We change lives. And we've had very many people who've said, you know, the library was their home base. But thank you for sharing that story. You're very welcome. Thank you, Donna. Moving on, water treatment play, uh, plan. Mr. Craig Purcell. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, <coughs> Board. Uh, in the month of March, the water plant treated 116.258 million gallons of water, delivered 99.059 million gallons to the citizens of Laverne. That's an average uh, daily treated of 3.75 million gallons per day uh, with the average of 2.598 MGD uh, delivered per day. In the month of March, our cross connection coordinator worked with Hope Plumbing to have devices that failed, have them retested. Currently there's 98 uh, retests pending. Uh, we are working with the owners of those businesses to have those re, uh, retested. In the month of March, we collected 40 bacteriological samples and all passed. And <clears throat> excuse me, in March, the TOC removal, the total organic carbon removal was 61.5%. And the required is 15%. That is 4.1 times better than, the, than what's required. With that, we also had our finished TOC at less than one milligram per liter or one part per million for two consecutive months. That's pretty big deal. A uh, few maintenance things that we did, there's a whole list on there, but we replaced the chlorine analyzer at McFarland Tank. We cleaned Super Pulsators 3 and 4, so all four have been cleaned for the year. We installed a level, level sensor on the bleach tank. 
repair check valve on the Paul membrane unit, installed a new coagulant pump, installed new light fixtures at the intake building, and installed a new vacuum pump on the super pulsator because one it went out. And I bring those up because the people that we have down there that can get this work done ends up saving the city money because we can do it in-house. We don't have to try to sub it out and use any of the maintenance money for that. We can focus strictly on parts and pieces to try to take care of those. And this is just a few of what we did throughout the month of March. Uh, in February, we had two pressure complaints, uh, one water quality complaint and three informational calls. One of the pressure complaints, they just needed to have a plumber come out and look at a PRV. Um, yeah, I think actually it was both of them, excuse me, with uh, the one water quality, said their water tasted bad. We came out, we figured out what was going on, we flushed the hydrant in their area and cleared that up for them. We also had the three informational, one said that they believed they had calcium buildup in their faucets and stuff. We went out, looked at it, helped them uh, work through that. Uh, the other one was uh, they had water in their backyard. Uh, we went out, saw what was happening, got them to the right department. And the third, they just wanted their water checked to see what it was. Any questions? Yes, sir. On uh, page seven on uh, the new side, the number four uh, mm -hmm. blowdown valve, it's, it's still out of service currently, right? Yes, sir. It has uh, been ordered. It's on back order. And as soon as it gets in, the work's scheduled to get done this month. And that's in the the regular maintenance budget. Uh, yes, sir. And the I guess the uh, streaming the current me meter is that still out of service? Yes, sir. It is. And where are we at with that? We're still looking to see what the best option is in replacing. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. I got to. I got a question and a comment. <coughs> uh, says no flushing was done in March. How often are you supposed to flush or how does that, annually, so I know. Annually, we're starting the unidirectional flushing. Um, looking at the plan, it's supposed to happen later in like sometime in May, 1st of June, uh, after late turnover at the water plant uh, in the lake. So it should happen at the end of May, early June. All right, I'm, and just, it's I'm trying to learn this stuff. Also, I want to make a comment about these guys. They have, uh, gotten heavily involved with the senior center and I'm gonna call you out while you're up here they have got they're making shirts for the seniors for their bowling league and they also have got something going on for the yard sale but they won't tell me what it is so I'll just have to wait <laughs> that's wonderful to see the uh, it was pretty tough for you guys you know throughout the contract with the community explaining what's going on with the water when we weren't going through some hiccups and for you guys to stay in the fight and come through not only are you fulfilling your contract obligations you know you've you there's nothing in your contract that says you have to hang out with our senior <laughs> citizens or or help support them so uh, the citizens see it and we hear it so um, hats off to alderman no and you guys because you you just change the whole elements. Now, as we work through these problems, it's, uh, it's a little easier in the community. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yes, sir. Yeah, Thank I've always been a great partner with the community, whether it's the Senior Center, whether it's Parks and Rec, yeah, whether it's different city events. So thank you all for that. That's what Infomark believes in. We believe in getting involved in the community and, and giving back. Yes, sir. We want to be part of the community. So. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Yeah. Moving on, Public Works. Garland Russell. <coughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, for the month of March of 2019, <clears throat> we had a total of 392 uh, brush pickups with 105,000 pounds, uh, 468 workhouse hours with 105 uh, work orders. We had in the fleet department 28 vehicle repairs, 24 was in house, 4 was outsourced. Uh, preventive maintenance was 20, equipment repair 11, fire department was 12 with 16 and a half hours just for the fire department. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Moving on, utilities department, Mr. Michael Deeds. Mayor, Vice Mayor, good afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry, Alderman, I apologize. 
Uh, water department total work orders for a month was 102. Our main line repairs were, were two. Our service line repairs were 12. We exercised 346 valves. Our fire hydrants uh, repaired for the month was one. Our estimated gallons of water not sold was 780,000. Overtime for the month was 43 and a half. Uh, the meter and leak detection department was 392. New meter sets were four. Meter swaps was 141. Uh, miles of pipe walk was 6.9. Meters listened to was 572. Located one leak. The customer request for the meter testing reports were seven. Meters tested was five. Tennessee one calls answer for the month was 236. Overtime in the meter department was 15. Uh, sewer department had a total of 135 on the work orders. Our service calls were 71. Pump station work orders were 64. Final grinder pump inspections were zero for the month. Manhole inspections were, and repairs were 79. Had four grinder pump rebuilds with a total of 58 hours overtime. Uh, as you all are, are aware, we have Richard's Leak Consultants in doing the leak surveying throughout the system. Uh, to date, he has found 17 leaks. The guys, that 12, were right behind him on repairs, uh, not including the two that they repaired yesterday and the two they repaired today. So we're right there with him neck and neck. So, any Michael, is that, is that justifying, I guess, with the leaks that uh, 780,000 gallons not sold? We had, yes, sir, again, uh, multiple things, and it varies from month to month, depending upon flushing or even right. sewer crews or storm water with the street sweeper. This month, a lot of this is from the leaks. The two uh, main culprits was the main line repairs. One that took place in McFarland Point, the call actually came in at like 6.30 on a Saturday morning. We was able to go back and look at SCADA through the treatment plant and calculate that water loss. We try to we try to get account for every drop. So we try to determine when the leak first started till we had it repaired, calculate that, and that's the total. I believe that leak was a pretty close to 500,000 gallons of water. Uh, the other main line repair was in the center point area. That was one that was found during leak detection. That was basically going underneath the ground. Uh, it was 215,000, I believe. Okay. So that, so that's. In a way, it's good we know that's where it is. Absolutely. And uh, with the the leaks, are you seeing? Is it infrastructure? Is it aging? Is it what do you think? Uh, I think it's just supply and demand. I, I think it's just supply and demand. I mean, out of 190-ish miles of pipe we have, I mean, it's it's day-to-day -day operations and maintenance. I mean, you know, if you have your house, you're going to repair a leak sometime right. throughout the lifespan of that home where we're taking on the whole city as one great big foundation. So That's right. uh, I think it's just basic maintenance. I really think we're in good shape with our infrastructure. Uh, you know, we're going to make some improvements to upsize with the 24 and help some pressure. Yeah. Not that we have pressure issues, but it's going to relieve some pressure throughout the system. And as we've discussed before, when we put the 18 inch water line in, we've seen improvements on, on our brakes. They reduced. Uh, so hopefully that'll help more, but I, I feel like our infrastructure is in pretty good shape. Okay. All right, man. Thanks for yes, answering that. And Mike, the, um, the your, your leak detection inspector, the water whisperer, yes, so to sir. say, he's already finished uh, west of Murfreesboro Road. Correct. And he will be moving east from here. Yes, sir. That's correct. So roughly, you know, like I said, 17 inch leaks on this side of town. Now we're headed towards Lake Forest. Uh, so I think we're doing really good. Wonderful. We've yeah. come such a long way. I mean, I just want to send a shout out to all the people in your department. It it is completely different than it used to be and it's getting better every day so i appreciate you guys so much yes ma'am thank you thank you sir thank you. stormwater department mr adam leach even mayor board uh this is from february 16th to march 15th we had 30 calls resulted in two new work orders uh, we have two work orders in progress during that time we closed eight Street sweeper ran three days. We have filled that position. It was vacant. So in the past uh, two weeks, it's ran eight days. So every day we've had a gentleman on it, it's ran. Uh, working days were 16, of course. Uh, we completed 240 construction inspections for the uh, RMS4 permit. We cleaned and repaired several culverts, headwear, headwall repairs, opened ditches and headwalls on Barnett, uh, cleaned out ditches on Deer, then we just did some typical maintenance work. Thank you, sir. Moving on to human resources, Cheryl Lewis Smith. Good 
Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. Here is the Human Resource Report. We had five external jobs posted with 162 applicants. There were actually four new hires. There is a correction for the internal jobs posted. There were only two jobs, internal jobs posted with nine applicants and two employees were actually promoted. We had three resignations with one termination and then we note that we had two workers' compensation claims, two liability claims. There were 83 care here appointments, zero no-shows. Our care here enrollment stayed the same. They did not have an update on our HRAs conducted, so we should get that next month. One short-term disability claim for a grand total dollar amount of $396,039. Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yes. Have we made an offer for the position for the senior citizen? No, we've just finished interviews, so we are in the process of reviewing all of those candidates. Great. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Moving on to old business. Um, we have a motion to approve an agreement between the City of Laverne and Penn and Tony Development Company to provide funding for the matching portion of the State in Industrial Access Program. This was discussed at the workshop as something that would need to be deferred currently. Mayor, I understand that this agreement has now been forwarded on to Penn and Tony. I don't think we've heard back from them yet. Um, so it's really at the pleasure of the board. You're, you're welcome to approve it and then Panatoni can either accept it or reject it. You can defer it and let Panatoni respond first and then come back and say that. It, it's really your option to how you wanna do it. I need a motion that we defer until we hear on the, the, what was in writing. I have a motion to defer, I need a second. So we don't know what's in writing yet. For, 100 percent sure well we we don't know we we know what what our proposal is we don't know what their response is to it they so. gave us a verbal on a dollar amount what they would put in but as far as i know bruce that's correct right, right. yes sir just a verbal yes sir. all right i'll second okay alderman church yes alderman no yes alderman jones i'm gonna say no vice mayor brown no and i will vote yes to defer it Motion passes. Second reading, Ordinance 2019-06, an ordinance to amend Title 15 of the Laverne Municipal Code, establishing a driver education course and providing for its operation. A motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Need a second? A second. Alderman Church? Aye. Alderman No. Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And I vote aye. Ordinance passes. Second reading, Ordinance 2019-07, an ordinance to amend Title III, Chapter 2, Section 3-207 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the powers of the city court judge. Need a motion to approve or deny? I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Need a second? I second. Alderman Church? Aye. Alderman No? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion passes. Moving on to the consent agenda. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Need a second? A second for discussion. Okay. In this uh, consent agenda, is this, has, is this the one that has the contract for the auditing services? Yes, that's A. And uh, Bruce, we spoke about that at the, the workshop. On You were going to look in to see the, the length of time. It's been, it's been the same... I, we don't bid this out because it's professional services. However, um, I think they've been doing it for 12 years. It, it's actually more than that. Uh, I didn't know what it was the other night. It looks like we have been using Yuri Howe since uh, fiscal year 2001-2002. Hmm. So, with uh, Evan, is, is this something that, as a city, 17 years, we've used the same audit service in... From what I've learned, uh, speaking to other municipalities, um, it's standard practice to kind of look out, look for different auditing services over a length of time. I don't know what that time is defined as. Maybe you can help us with 18 years they've been providing our audit service. 
it's it's like a cookie cutter pattern. I've I've read the last three audits, and it's you know, 18 years later, is that something that we need to look into? You know, uh, I I think it's completely up to y'all. I think if you're I'm I'm not aware as I sit here, I'm not aware of any law that requires you to use different firms. It may be a best practice to do that. I don't know that. But I think what it comes down to is it's it's 100% your call. It's your discretion. You're not obligated to approve this at all, uh, and you're not obligated to change. It's you know t completely up to completely up to y'all. So would I? I guess I can make a motion to. There's already a motion on the table okay. and seconded to approve this. Approve so there's both no, items. So there's no way for us to put this out to um, to other people to look at. Is that possible? Well, currently, it, there's, it depends on the vote. There's a vote. Um, there's been a motion and a second to approve both items, both the contract for the audit accounts as well as uh, approving change order number five for the Lower East Hurricane Creek Interceptor Sewer Line Project. Well, because it's in the consent agenda, but as this being one in particular thing, is there? can I make the motion that we approve the agenda and remove this? I got a point there's of order. Already I got a point of order. It says right here that the items on the consent agenda will not be discussed. So I, I, we've got a we got a motion and we got a second. So I, I move that we go ahead and vote. All right. Just I'd like to add that to the minutes, please. That uh, my question in having the the same audit service for 18 years, providing service in the city of Laverne. I'm not saying it's it's good or bad. As our legal staff has stated, it is our right to um, look into it and you know possibly outsource this i make a motion that we deny we already have a motion and okay. a second by you to approve right. this so alderman church no alderman no aye alderman jones aye vice mayor brown aye and i vote aye consent agenda passes moving on to new business resolution 2019-08 a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Aldermen to declare property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and direct and directing disposal of the same. This was discussed as uh, some vehicles from police department that were seized and I uh, need a motion to approve or deny. Make a motion to approve. <laughs> have a motion to approve. Need a second. I second. Alderman Church. Aye. Alderman No. Aye. Alderman Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor uh, Brown. Aye. And I vote aye. Resolution passes. Resolution 2019-09, a resolution to authorize the mayor to enter into a contract for the purchase of real property along Stones River Road. This was discussed at the workshop as being parcels uh, or being addressed as 518 Stones River Road, 514 Stones River Road, and 480. Need a motion to approve or deny? I make a motion to deny. I have a motion to deny. Need a second? I'll second. Alderman Church? Aye. Alderman No? Aye. Alderman Jones? No. Vice Mayor Brown? No. And I vote no. Motion fails. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Need a second? I second for discussion. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, if you'll, as, if you'll explain this a little bit more to me on the reasoning for purchasing this property. As you stated in the, um, at the workshop, this was discussed um, post-election. Um, and this, in fact, is the same property that was discussed um, going back to the uh, Daily News Journal article, which uh, joints one of the developer's property. So this has been on the table for several years. And my concern is- What news article is that? Because I've not seen a news article that references property specifically. It, it's not referencing the property specifically, but I'm going on your statement, uh, Mayor, when you said that uh, they, a realtor came to you after the election. Came to me election day, I said. Election day. Mentioned about uh, some rezoning for potential apartments, wanted to talk afterwards, then after the elections, came and mentioned this property. And this is the same property that uh, we discussed prior to being elected. Uh, that was uh, what we were calling at the time the, uh, the city complex, which now I've learned it's not a city complex. It's, uh, so I, I just have some questions for that. If, if we're looking at one property that's estimated around a million dollars and we're looking at this property 
that's estimated around a million dollars. And when I ask the mayor, what are we putting on that property? And you tell me right now we haven't decided. I think when we spend a million dollars or $2 million of the taxpayer's money, we need to have a plan going back to our plan that we looked at, uh, that we learned of at the planning commission training in, in that it talks about, you know, moving, adding and adding buildings and the government buildings. We have $64 million worth of government buildings proposed to us by department heads. It's Talking about the multi-year capital spending plan. Yes. Sir. That's a proposal for the board to decide what <coughs> happens and what doesn't happen. Yes. Sir. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. So to me, it, can you tell me at this time, if we're, <coughs> if we're negotiating to buy 25 acres or 48 acres total in, with, with both properties, is that correct? We're not currently negotiating. That's what this resolution allows is for the mayor to the, have the authority to negotiate on this property. We're not actively negotiating on this property. <coughs> but you are actively negotiating on the other 25 acres? On the other 20 some odd acres, yes. Okay. That's a joint to this property? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what's the plan for the property? Well, I've suggested as far as it's up to this board ultimately what that property is used for love to see a community center that's been discussed by our planning or by our parks and rec for years but ultimately that's decided upon by this board similar to how Smyrna is purchasing some property near the town center that they don't have plans for right now but the board figures that in the future they may need that and that's from a discussion just yesterday with their town manager <coughs> I'm just concerned about buying this property and in the same token we're this isn't buying the property. This is allowing for negotiations. To any, purchase the property. Well, any final action still has to be approved, and it's stated in here, has to be approved and ratified by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. I just want to remind the mayor that uh, <coughs> one of the reasons why we're sitting up here is to make those decisions, and one of the reasons why we were successfully in our campaign is because we, we, didn't, we weren't for this... $40 million complex or $100 million complex, whatever the numbers well, may be. No, nobody at this point is pitching for a complex, whether it be a 40 or a hundred million. At this point with this board, you're the only one who's mentioned it. Do you have any plans to move public works to this property? To this property? No. What about the adjoining property? That's up for this board to decide. The mayor does not make that sole decision. Again, so that's a board decision. Okay. With all due respect, I mean, that is the responsibility of the board to make these determinations. And we have a space needed assessment study that was done. It's a f probably five inch thick binder that goes over the space assessment needs at the time, which I think was two, two or three years ago, maybe four. Um, this city's population is going to grow. So it's predicted to double in population in the next 10 years. And with, in respect to that, with all of the property that's already been developed in Laverne, we need to have the mayor have the ability to negotiate a piece of property, bring us back a price that he negotiated, and then we, the board, would decide whether or not to purchase it. Further, what would be done with that property would also be something that the board would budget for and vote on as a unit. So you get a say in every step of this process, and, um, of course, as a representative, you would represent the, the um, desires of the citizens that we, we serve. So um, this is a first step of many, many steps, basically, where you would have a right to voice your opinion at each stage. It is. And just going back with the comments from the retreat, the we're doing this because we're out of room. We're over capacity. I understand that. But after doing my research, you know, we talked about the, the, the public works building that's currently, I was told that it was flooded and, and, and none of the, all that was false. It did not flood during the May floods. Um, you know, the, there's documentation to support this. So in my opinion, of course, I'm just one vote is before we spend millions of dollars on property and then millions of dollars to develop the property and then millions of dollars to build the buildings, you know, just it's simple math. It, it's 50, 60, 70 million dollars and it starts with approving this and it starts with you know purchasing of these land of, of this property and in the same meetings we have our fire chief and our police chief and they're telling us that they're short-handed and you know maybe it's because i'm new but this is 
consistent with you know the plan that the community did not want and uh, I don't think anybody uh, you know I've actually seen mixed response from the community both for and against it so not just any one and also I would just like to say that um, staffing needs is an operational expense this would be a capital expense right no, I understand. It's, it's I, from a different budget, so it, it does. But I understand. You know, when you bond this money and and we borrow or whatever we do, you know, it's a debt that this board's not going to have to pay back. You know, this is you're talking 20 years of board members. We may or may not be up here. And to me, uh, we everyone on this board ran on a conservative ticket, and I don't know how conservative that is to uh, to to start the, the outline of this complex. Well, everyone on this board ran as independent. Um, and that is, we are all independent regardless of how you vote in, in other elections. We're all independent on this board. And so if not this property, what property would you recommend? Well, I think we have the property. I mean, I do, and, 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 and other people do. You know, our, their own study that you're talking about, it talks about, and Bruce can confirm this, it talks about going up going up at City Hall, going up at Public Works, going up on existing land. We own these properties. There's no, there's no dollar amount owed. Have you looked at the, the cost of um, doubling the height of these buildings? Because there is a, a lot of engineering and building fees that would be added to that. So it's not, either way, it's going to cost us money. Oh, no, I agree. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I have kind of looked at the cost uh, from some previous things that the, the city has been involved with, you know, are you going to invest ten million dollars in, in to this complex? This is w what I'm using the words complex, or a, a ten million dollar in improvements is a lot less than sixty million dollars in improvements. That, who, that's just who here has mentioned sixty million dollars in in projects. A mayor, of <coughs> course, at this. Board. If you're telling me we're going to buy. Or we're going to negotiate to buy this property. You're already negotiating to buy the other property. And if you're going to sit up here and, and say that that's not, that's not millions of dollars just on the proposed, you know, buildings that, 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 uh, is, in, that is needed. And then we want to, what are we going, what are we going to do? Are we going to sell the property where codes is? Are we going to sell the property, you know, where station two is? Are we going to sell the property that where uh, public works is? These are things that's came out of your mouth, but I'm concerned because as, as we work to get behind this desk, our goal was to stop the debt, not increase the debt. Our goal was to utilize what we have and add to it. And now, you know, we're, we're here and Again, Alderman Church, nobody, yeah, I haven't heard you answer that question about who on this board is advocating $60 million in new buildings for this, for you, these Mayor properties. Cole, you are. Where have, I, where have I advocated $60 million, please? Because you continue to push for, for this uh, city complex. Again, you've been the only board member who's been mentioning a city complex. That's not been a discussion up here as far as anybody pushing that, so... Bruce, the other study that was done in uh, 2005 that uh, it did, it was talked about, you were involved with that also. 2015? Well, there was one prior to that in 2005, too. Um, maybe you can pull that up. But they did talk about going up as, as a city. At the, you know, the police department, we met with the chief at the retreat, and the, the chief's plan is to add on to the police department where it currently sits because of our investment new roofs, new radio towers, new this. I mean, we're putting millions of dollars into a current building. The chief's plan is to grow that building. Re we relocate CID over there. We put everybody in a, a, a safer area. I'm for that. That's, that's a fragment of this cost. And then City Hall the we, same way. We don't know what this cost is, though. This I is know about, this property is going to cost us a million dollars. This is specifically for negotiating this property, so we don't know a, a cost. So... As far as to say that that's for a fragment of this, if you're saying it's going to be a million dollars, you're looking, you're saying that. I'm, I'm saying what the mayor told be, us. That's that's what that's what the mayor told us at the retreat. The mayor hasn't discussed this property as far as the price. Okay. So, so our call for a vote. We have a motion to approve in a second. Well, I haven't weighed in oh. yet. Okay. Please. I've listened patiently. 
before I vote, I just want the people to know why I'm voting the way I'm voting. Uh, I did go out into Lake Forest and I talked to people. I made phone calls, text messages, uh, quite a bit on social media, which I don't pay a, much attention to that. And to be quite honest, it's a 50-50, yes and no. So when I took this role, I knew there was going to be some tough decisions, so I'm kind of stuck in the past a little bit. Not that it has anything to do with this board, but I am stuck in the past. Last year, July or August, uh, at that time, I'm speaking in the past tense, Matt Church, Steve No, Alderman Cohen, Alderman Brown, along with the former mayor and our gentleman that's on our planning commission was invited out to the big housing out on, what I can't even think of the name Wood of it. Woodsong Subdivision. Woodsong Subdivision. And we all went out there, we sat down and there was some conversation come up and our former mayor, and it, no, he's not here and it don't matter, but it's stuck in my crawl, talked about this property and building a 40 to $100 million complex. 40 to 50 million, you know, I can, the numbers are not as crazy. So I kind of let that go because he was voted out and, and, and everything was gone. But now it's resurfaced. Some of the people out there in Lake Forest, it's a crapshoot. We know it is. If we don't buy the property, are we going to get houses? If we do buy the property, are we going to get public works? Are we going to get a city hall? Are we going to have to spend $100 million? According to this board, most of you, we don't know. But with that being said, my vote is no on buying or the mayor being able to get the property. Okay, well, our call for the vote. Alderman Church? No. Alderman No? No. Alderman Jones? Yes. Vice Mayor Brown? Yes. And I vote aye. Resolution passes. Resolution 2019-10, a resolution to write off water department bad debts. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Need a second? I second for discussion. <clears throat> When we, when we write off the bad debts, um, this is something that was brought to my attention. And Phyllis, maybe you can answer this because I wasn't able to give the answer. Okay. Uh, if we write off the bad debt in the resident or someone that, that we wrote off, they relocate back to Laverne. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do we, are we able to get our money from them? Yes, absolutely. Whenever we have any customer that signs up for new service, we do a research while they're standing there to see if we've ever turned over anything to collection agency or if we've ever wrote off any bad debt for that customer. And they're not allowed to sign up for service until they pay that um, past due balance from arrears. And that, that makes us legal, we, we can do that? Yes. Thank you. I actually know some of the people on this list. We're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> We're acquaintances. But there's some, uh, there's a builder on here. There's a uh, realtor on here that are in this city. And I just want to know, because I don't know, how, how, how has this been going about trying to collect this money if they're actually in the city? Well, we try our best. You know, we send them letters, and we turn it over to Fox, and if they just refuse to pay, then we have no option but to write it off and let Fox Collection do, you know, do the uh, collection on it. Okay, so if we so if we vote yes on this and it's and we write it off and then they collect money, do we get it? Yes, we do. We get a percentage of. We don't get a hundred percent. I make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> and a few of Any these, or nothing, right? A, a few of these these people on this list have already reached out. I know I've, I've spoken to somebody who that same day reached out to the water to billing billing department and paid theirs. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So I have a motion to approve in a second. Alderman Church. Aye. Alderman No. Aye. Alderman Jones. 
Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. I vote aye. Resolution passes. Moving on to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman, no. Well, you know I got to talk about the senior center. I got to talk about the uh, yard sale coming up. But uh, one thing I wanted to uh, talk about is a lot of people don't know this lady. And I don't know, AC, you can correct me. I don't know if she's our oldest citizen in Laverne, uh, Miss Jane. Okay, she's 104. Does that sound right? She, uh, she fell the other day. And when you're 104 and fall, it don't matter if you trip over whatever, but she fell down. Uh, Conrad went to the call, so he could have told you more about it. But uh, I just wanted you guys to, to say some prayers for Miss Jane. She's back up. She's doing good. And I think she was at the senior center today. So, and then everybody else that I want to thank, AC talked about it. So I'll keep it short. Thank you, sir. Alderman Church. I just want to uh, actually talk about the Fire Explorer program. Uh, yesterday, I was able to run by there uh, while they were conducting their meeting. And uh, they're in their second round of re new recruits. Um, Chief, I'm sure you can agree it was a, it was a packed house. Um, while I was there, uh, I was looking for my son, Hayden Church, and uh, they pointed up to the ladder. Uh, he was 75 feet in the air um, with a, one of the mentors, uh, Brittany, firefighter Brittany was, was with him. And uh, when Hayden came home, I, I asked him, how did he feel? And uh, he told me as a lieutenant with the Fire Explorer program, he has to uh, demonstrate, um, you have to overcome your fears. Uh, up until yesterday, my son was afraid of heights. The fire department wasn't aware of that. And- uh, The chief is too. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say um, they're, they're doing, uh, the, the mentors and, and the, the fire marshal and the chief and his staff, they're, they're doing way more than uh, building future firemen and firewomen. They are, uh, they are teaching these kids how to uh, overcome fear. They're teaching these kids how to um, be leaders. And uh, it was pretty overwhelming. We had a man-to-man uh, -man talk last night, and it was, it was uh, pretty impressive. When he, I asked him how did he feel when he was up there. He said, Dad, getting up wasn't bad. Coming down was a little crazy. <laughs> so uh, hats off to you guys, Chief. And uh, I, I, there was more people there from Smyrna and Murfreesboro than there were Laverne yesterday. We have kids that are coming from all over the county now. And I, I think that in itself is, uh, says a lot. It's been a long time since, since something like that has happened in our city. We, we usually go to other communities. And uh, for that, you know, all, all these things going on in the, in the community, we're, we're starting to see a trend. And, uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Alderman Jones. Thank you. I would just like to say that uh, I was notified earlier this evening that uh, one of the deacons at Laverne Church of Christ, Deacon Reed, want everyone to uh, have the Reed family in your thoughts and prayers for, uh, for the loss of their family member. And also, uh, congratulations to the fire department for their three officers and the police department for your one officer graduations. Um, we can uh, hopefully we can look forward to some stable weather coming up here for the weekends. Uh, I'm going to try to make as many as I can, but you know you have to you have to just play by what the weather says these days. Thank you, Vice Mayor Brown. I just want to say I'm I'm really glad to be from Laverne. Um, I love the sense of community that we have. And sometimes what we have in this meeting is not necessarily a fair reputation, uh, representation of what we actually have as a whole in the 40,000 members of our population or so. I guess we'll find out exactly how many when the census comes out. But when you have that many people and we're scheduled to grow, you're going to have that many different opinions about how we should do it, how um, that should happen, how many people should live in each home. and 
how many square foot the house should be, how big the yard should be. There's a variety of different opinions. And I think that there's a respectful way to, to go about expressing those. I'm always happy to talk to anybody that wants to call me, reach out to me by email, um, communicate with me, get on Facebook. Um, it's probably not your best um, solution. And the reason is that sometimes people get on Facebook and just spew hate. Um, internet trolls are a thing. I have them. I'm sure you guys have them. And um, that don't let that distort your view of Laverne. This is a flourishing community where people are neighborly and kind and love one another. And those few, you know, I read a psychological study that said that internet trolls are um, psychopaths and sociopaths. They truly don't care about what you think of them. Um, and they are mentally ill and choose to create that dissonance, dissonance in a community, whether it be here in Laverne or whether it's a national arena. And so just keep that in mind. Don't let the comments from those few get in your heart because this community is great, this country is great, and we're just getting better every day. So I just want you to keep that in your mind. Thank you. Well, I want to remind everybody about the census. We kicked it off yesterday in Murfreesboro with Mayor Kittren, Mayor Reed, Mayor Lehman, and myself. And uh, you will see federal census workers out door knocking and getting information. So please definitely work with them. That benefits both the city here, benefits the county. So please make sure that you're participating in that. I uh, want to remind everyone, of course, April 13th is the Easter egg hunt. It is always packed. We have the fire fun day. It will be a wonderful event. So please make sure to come out to that. I want to remind everybody about the 21st of April, the Easter extravaganza at uh, First Baptist Church of Laverne uh, will be going on. The 27th, of course, we have the senior yard sale, which is going to be packed as well. And there's, as Alderman No is whispering over to me, he mentions about a power, uh, powder puff football game he's organizing. And then I, I just want to remind everybody and thank those because I can see so many people wearing blue today. Today is uh, World Autism Day, and so it's wear blue for World Autism. So thank you for those that did, and I want to say hello to my buddy who's, I know he's watching this specifically, uh, Hezekiah. So with that, call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>